The Ultrafan is a, a new architecture for Rolls-Royce for um, civil engines. It also has um, an IP turbine, which is a high-speed turbine. We've removed the, um, the low-speed turbine from the back of the engine, so a much more efficient turbine. We bring all these technologies, the gearbox, the turbine, the combustor, the composite fan together in the Ultrafan demo. Could the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan actually spell trouble for Boeing? Not long ago, Boeing was set to be the first to use this massive engine in its next generation aircraft. But now with the company already struggling through multiple crises, the very engine that once promised innovation might turn into a serious threat. How did things take such a sharp turn? Let's break it down. In early 2024, Rolls-Royce kicked off a major upgrade campaign for its Trent wide-body engines, aiming to extend their lifespan and cut down on maintenance. Airlines love engines that stay in the air longer because every time an engine gets swapped or repaired, it's a costly, time-consuming headache that keeps jets grounded instead of making money. To make this happen, Rolls-Royce is using new materials, improved coatings, and better cooling technology to tweak the turbines. As a bonus, these upgrades will also slightly boost efficiency. But this campaign wasn't just about innovation, it was damage control. Rolls-Royce had been catching heat over durability issues especially with some Trent engines in harsh environments. This wasn't their first rough patch either. The Trent 1000, which powered Boeing's 787s, had so many problems that the company had to roll out an upgraded version called the Trent 1000 TEN. Even that wasn't perfect, leading airlines like ANA and Air New Zealand to ditch Rolls-Royce in favor of General Electric's g &X engine for their future 787s. That was a huge blow, and things only got worse. Many airlines had signed power-by-the-hour contracts with Rolls-Royce, meaning they paid based on flight hours while Rolls covered maintenance. But when the Trent Thousand started having issues, that deal backfired. The maintenance costs fell on Rolls-Royce, eating into profits. Then just as they were finally getting a handle on those problems, the pandemic hit. For most aircraft manufacturers, it was a tough time. But for Rolls-Royce, which had heavily focused on making engines for big long-haul jets, it was a financial nightmare. With global travel at a standstill, demand for their engines plummeted, and they were left bleeding cash while trying to fix their reputation. Despite these setbacks, Rolls-Royce has a legacy that's hard to ignore. Their engines have powered airliners of all sizes, and their legendary RB211, which nearly bankrupted the company in the 1970s, ended up revolutionizing jet engines. That engine laid the foundation for the entire Trent family, defining Rolls-Royce's commercial aviation presence for decades. Even today, most wide-body aircraft flying have a Trent engine option, except for a few, like the Boeing 767. But while Rolls-Royce was scrambling to fix the Trent's issues, they were also working on something much bigger, the Ultrafan. This isn't just another engine. It's their first completely new engine architecture since the 1960s. And it's got one standout feature, an absolutely massive fan. At 140 inches in diameter, it's even larger than the GE9X that will power Boeing's 777X. But size isn't the only thing that makes it special. The Ultrafan uses a gear reduction system that allows the fan to spin slower while the engine's core spins faster, increasing efficiency and reducing fuel burn. It's the same concept behind Pratt & Whitney's geared turbofan engines and the upcoming CFMRISE open fan engine the prototype Ultrafan was tested at 85,000 pounds of thrust, more than it was even designed for. Rolls-Royce says it can be scaled up to match the GE 9X's 110,000 pounds or even shrunk down for smaller aircraft. But here's the catch. Rolls-Royce doesn't currently have a customer for it. The first aircraft expected to use the Ultrafan was Boeing's rumored 797 a mid-sized airliner meant to fill the gap between the 737 and 787. But in 2019, Rolls-Royce unexpectedly backed out of the competition to supply engines for that plane. So why was that? And why would a groundbreaking engine like this possibly come back to haunt Boeing? Well, let's break it down. Back in 2019, Rolls-Royce made a surprising decision. They pulled out of the competition to supply engines for Boeing's next all-new airliner. The reason? Timing. Rolls-Royce was aiming high, developing a next-gen engine packed with new technology, but they miscalculated something crucial. They assumed Boeing could wait for it. 
At the time, Boeing was eyeing a 2025 launch for its so-called Boeing 797, a mid-sized aircraft that could slot between the 737 and 787. Rolls-Royce, on the other hand, believed the earliest possible entry into service would be 2027. That two-year gap was a deal-breaker. Boeing wanted an engine ready sooner, but Rolls-Royce's Ultrafan just wouldn't be ready in time. Now looking back, Boeing's timeline was wildly optimistic. If they had gone ahead with the 797 in 2019, they would have had to develop, certify, and deliver it in just six years. Something they struggled to do even with the much seven simpler 777X. That plane, originally expected in seven years, is now looking at a 13-year timeline. Partly due to the extra scrutiny Boeing faced after the 737 MAX disasters. With Boeing out of the picture, Rolls-Royce turned to Airbus. Even before this, Rolls-Royce and Airbus had an agreement to flight test the Ultrafan on one of Airbus's planes. But in early 2019, Rolls-Royce took things a step further and proposed an entirely new engine for an upgraded Airbus A350, the A350neo. For Rolls-Royce, the math was simple. The Ultrafan promised to be 25% more efficient than the oldest Trent engines and still about 10% more efficient than the latest Trent XWB, which already powers the A350. That kind of fuel savings could mean huge operational cost reductions, longer range, and higher payload capacity for airlines. But for Airbus, there was a problem. The A350 was still practically brand new. It had only entered service in 2015, and in 2019, orders were still rolling in. If Airbus announced an A350neo, many customers waiting for their A350s would likely delay deliveries to get the newer, better version instead. Since aircraft manufacturers get most of their money when planes are delivered, Airbus wasn't too keen on anything that might mess with their cash flow. So by 2019, the Ultrafan found itself stuck in a strange limbo. Too late for Boeing, too early for Airbus. But things didn't stay that way. By 2021, Boeing was finally starting to put the 737 MAX nightmare behind them and Rolls-Royce was once again hoping their Ultrafan could find a home under the wings of a future Boeing aircraft. At the time, Rolls-Royce's CEO, Warren East, hinted that Boeing was exploring the opportunity for a new aircraft and that Rolls-Royce was very much in discussions with them. But then Boeing's CEO, Dave Calhoun, threw a curveball. He announced that Boeing wouldn't even start working on a new clean sheet design until the end of the decade. That left Rolls-Royce in the same frustrating position. No major plane ready to take its engine. So what now? Well, Boeing has its hands full, so an all-new mid-sized aircraft isn't happening anytime soon. Airbus, meanwhile, is studying new wing designs and composite materials, but without real pressure from Boeing, they're in no rush to build something new either. But here's where things get interesting. While Airbus has been dominating the single-aisle market with the A320 family, they're still playing catch-up when it comes to wide-body aircraft. Boeing 777-300ER was the best-selling wide-body of the 2010s, and while airlines like Emirates are eagerly awaiting its replacement, others are holding on to their 777s longer than expected. The delays in Boeing's 777X program, combined with slow 787 production, have thrown the market into chaos. In fact, demand for used 777-730ERs is so high that companies hoping to convert them into freighters are struggling to find available aircraft. That shortage is putting Airbus in a position they've never been in before. They have a real chance to challenge Boeing's dominance in the big jet market. Airbus has always had a bit of a chip on its shoulder when it comes to wide bodies. The A380 was as much about proving themselves as it was about competing with the 747. It didn't pan out the way they hoped, but they're still determined to shake off the idea that Boeing owns a large aircraft space. In a recent interview, Airbus executive Christian Scherer made it clear, Airbus is coming for Boeing's wide-body crown. So how do they do that? Well, that's where the Ultrafan could come in. The massive size and architecture of the Ultrafan line up almost perfectly with what would be needed for an A350neo. Back in 2019, it was just a concept. Today, it's a working engine that's been ground tested, though it still hasn't flown. So could Boeing just use the Ultrafan too? In theory, yes, but in reality, there are two big obstacles. 
Money and politics. Boeing is still struggling to get the 777X into service, with first deliveries now expected no earlier than late 2026. They're stretched thin financially, so investing in a second engine option isn't really an option. Then there's the issue of General Electric. GE makes the only engine available for the 777X, the GE9X. If Boeing even hinted at adding a Rolls-Royce option before the plane enters service, GE wouldn't be happy. Airbus, at least, would still be using Rolls-Royce for both old and new A350S. But Boeing throwing another engine maker into the mix would be a political nightmare. That means if Airbus goes ahead with an A350neo powered by the Ultrafan, Boeing likely won't have an answer for years. The most Boeing could realistically do is offer a smaller Ultrafan for its 787 if Rolls-Royce agrees. But even then, Airbus could counter by putting that same engine on an upgraded A330neo, since the current A330neo and 787 use nearly identical Rolls-Royce engines. Of course, Airbus and Rolls-Royce won't move forward without airline interest. They'd need a big customer, someone like Emirates, to commit. And while fuel savings are huge, reliability is just as important. Emirates' president, Tim Clark, has made it clear he'd rather have a slightly less efficient engine that's rock-solid reliable than something cutting-edge that constantly needs repairs. Another wild card? Airbus might not want to provoke Boeing unnecessarily. They're already ahead, so why poke the bear? Rolls-Royce, still recovering from the pandemic, may also be hesitant to take risks. But here's the thing. If they don't move forward with the Ultrafan now, they might never get the chance. Airbus knows that sitting still for too long is dangerous. History has shown that if you stop innovating, you risk fading into irrelevance. And that's exactly how McDonnell Douglas disappeared. Airbus doesn't want to make that mistake. So could the A350neo be the move that finally puts Boeing on the ropes? And if Airbus and Rolls-Royce take this leap, does Boeing have any real way to fight back? Let me know what you think in the comments below.